The next thing we need to talk about is how to find the length of a vector, the magnitude of a vector. Okay, so the magnitude of a vector is the length or the distance of a directed line segment. It's the same as the distance formula as you recall where you subtract the x's at your x component and square it, subtract the y's, square it. It is just the Pythagorean theorem. So how could we find the magnitude of vector p1 to p2? Well if you wanted to just kind of do a little sketch, so let's see negative 3, positive 2, there's p1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, way up here is P2. That's what I want to find. Right? So first of all, let's write this as a position vector. And in order to find the position vector, you want to do terminal minus the initial. So 6 minus a negative 3. And then 5 minus 2. That order is very important because of that direction. So if I call this vector v, then this is going to be 9 comma 3, which means I went over 9 and up 3, make a right triangle, and now I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have this symbol, kind of like double absolute value bars. The square root of 9 squared plus 3 squared, that's 81 plus 9, which is 90. Let's go ahead and simplify that and write it as 3 square root of 10. So the magnitude is just the distance, the Pythagorean theorem, finding the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Next thing I want to talk about is a unit vector. A unit vector is a vector that has a length or magnitude of 1. So if I wanted to come back up here and I wanted to find a unit vector in the direction of P1, P2, I'd still want it to point, but I just want it a little bitty part. I don't want the square root of 90. I want 1. So how do I do that? Well, if you have something that's 5 units long and you want to make it 1, you would just divide by 5. If you had something that's 20 units long, you would just divide by 20. And so that's why we're just going to take the vector that gives us the direction and we're going to divide it by how long it is and that gives us a unit vector, remember a length of 1. So if I want to find a unit vector in the direction of 3, uh, negative 4, I need to find the magnitude of that vector by using that formula of a squared plus b squared square rooted, so 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. You want to be very careful about negative signs. If you want to enter those into the calculator then you've got to put the parentheses. I would just suggest drop the negatives because you square it, it's going to be positive. Be careful. All right, so we have the square root of 9 plus 16, that's the square root of 25, which is 5. So what's my unit vector? That's just the magnitude. I want to go back to this formula. So my unit vector is my vector, which is 3, negative 4, divided by 5. You could leave it like that, but I think it would be a little bit prettier if you wrote it like that. Or one more step, go ahead and divide the components. And if you use the Pythagorean theorem and you did a squared plus b squared and took the square root of that, you would get 1. We have what's called principal unit vectors. They are defined by i and j. Right, so a unit vector has a length of 1, so i is defined by the director 1, 0, and j is 0, 1. So if you're looking at that, we have, if that's 1 and that's 1, this would be i, that would be j. Okay. So it just delineates x's and y's into terms of i's and j's. can be very confusing, but another way we can write our vector is in the ij form as opposed to component form. All right, so how do I find a unit vector in the direction of v? Well, first of all, I'm going to find the 
magnitude of V by again, remember this is AB, I'm finding A squared plus B squared, so that's 4 plus 1, that's the square root of 5, and then I want to divide my vector by its magnitude to make it a unit vector. So I could, let's use U for unit, I could say that's 1 divided by the square root of 5, 2, negative 1. So that's the component form. How can I write it like that? Well, let's see, 2 over the square root of 5, I, minus 1 over the square root of 5, J. You may rationalize those, get rid of that radical in the denominator, or you can leave it just like that. Now let's take a trip down memory lane of review of trigonometry. Let's call that theta. It's a right triangle. Let's label this as x and y. Hopefully you remember by definition that the sine of theta is y or opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is x divided by the hypotenuse. Well, what are we going to call this hypotenuse? I'm going to call that the magnitude or the distance of a vector. So I could rewrite this as y over the magnitude of v. If I cross multiply to get rid of the fractions, I get this. Very important. This gives me the component or the y part of the vector. I can do the same thing over here. So what this tells us is to get the x component or the x part is you're going to multiply the magnitude of the vector times the sine of theta. And to get the x component, you can do the magnitude times the cosine. That's going to be true in math and physics. So keeping that in mind, we want to find a vector and we want to write it in i plus j form. And they're giving us the magnitude and the angle of 45 degrees. And we're going to keep it just like we learned in trig, that it's measured with the positive x-axis. So if you just kind of want to visualize it, 45 degrees, this is 8, 45 degrees. And I want the x component and the y component. All right, so let's do the x. So x is the magnitude times the cosine of 45 degrees using this formula right here. So 8. And do you remember what the cosine of 45 degrees? Not decimals. Square root of 2 over 2. So simplifying, that would be the x component. The y component, again using this one, would be the magnitude times the sine of 45 degrees. You should remember the sine and cosine of 45 degrees is the same. So I have found the components, but let's write our answer in ai plus bj form. So our vector v is 4 square root of 2 in the i direction, meaning in the x, plus 4 square root of 2 in the j direction. Let's do another example. Again, trying to think about your trig. Same thing. So I want the x component is my magnitude times the cosine of 240 degrees. Let's just stop for a minute and think about where is 240 degrees. Well, this is 180. So I've got to go further to 240 degrees. So I'm in the third quadrant. So this is of length 10. My reference angle would be 60 degrees because 180 plus 60 is 240. So think about that. I want an x and a y. So my final answers should both be negative because I've gone in the third quadrant. So x is 10. Now what is the cosine of 240 degrees? You should know that. It's in your unit circle. You could think about 60 degrees and then say, ah, oh, the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, but since it's in the third quadrant, I need to make it negative. So the x component is negative 5. What about the y? It's 10 times the sine of 240 degrees. Right, again, what is the sine of 240 degrees? We should know that that's negative square root of 3 over 2. And so writing my answer in the form they asked me for,
we want to look at our answer and make sure that it's reasonable. I'm in the third quadrant. I need both components to be negative. Now since a vector has magnitude and direction, it's kind of important to know what that direction is or how to find theta. So again, let's just kind of review some trigonometry. If I make that a right triangle and I call that theta and I want to measure that, and I have my x component and my y component, what trig function can I use? Tangent. Remember the tangent of theta is y over x. So if I want to find theta, I would use the inverse tangent of y over x. Or if I was talking in terms of the components, that might also be a, and this is b, so I could say theta is the inverse tangent of b over a, depending on how you want to think about it. So let's see, how would we find the, we want to find the direction angle of the given vectors. So I want to find theta. So I'd have theta equals the inverse tangent of my y component divided by my x component. You want to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So if you were just to punch that in, and again let's just round to the nearest degree, that's fine. I would get 53 degrees. Now is that reasonable? Well, reasonable meaning that's the first quadrant. If I were to plot 3, 4, which is right here, or close, one, I think at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 53 degrees is a reasonable answer. So let's look at this one. So theta would be the inverse tangent of 5 over negative 5. Let's think about what quadrant that's in. That's left, and that's up. Okay. So I'm in the second quadrant, so I need an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees. Right. So let's look at what happens when I punch that in on the calculator. So I want to make sure that my calculator is in degree mode, which it is. Right. So then I'm going to say inverse tangent of 5 divided by negative 5. And it gives me negative 45 degrees. Hmm. Well, I don't think my calculator is wrong there's negative 45 degrees, but I know I need it in the second quadrant. So my calculator gives me that. My brain tells me it needs to be in the second quadrant, so I need to add 180 degrees. So it would be 135 degrees. Quadrants, signs, be careful. Let's look at this one. Negative and negative. So what quadrant are we in? Quadrant 3. So if I take th theta is the inverse tangent of negative 7 over negative 2. Okay, let's look at what that calculator would give you. Inverse tangent of negative 7 divided by negative 2. Now you all should know the negative to negative is over a positive. So what's the calculator going to give you? It's going to give you an answer in the first quadrant. All right, so we're going to say that's about 74 degrees. But I need it in quadrant 3. So here's 74 degrees, but I need it all the way over here. So how do I do that? I'm going to add 180 degrees, and I should get about 254. Quadrants, signs, be careful. Right, let's look here. What quadrant? I'm going to go, let's see, right 3 and down 8. I'm in the fourth quadrant. Right, so again, theta is the inverse tangent of negative 8 over 3. So inverse tangent of negative 8 divided by 3. And my calculator gives me that negative 69 degrees. And again, we're just rounding. Well, is that wrong? That gives it to me in the fourth quadrant, but most directed angles are between 0 and 360, so even though that is acceptable, I believe on the test I'm going to restrict you between 0 and 360. So how could I write that as a positive angle? I need to go around this way. So that's not 180 degrees. I have to add 
360 degrees and so I get an answer of 291. Again this would be acceptable unless I tell you that theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. So how can we use vectors? Oh my goodness, so many different ways. Let's say we have a car weighing 3,000 pounds parked on a driveway that is inclined 15 degrees. So let's just draw that picture. I need an incline. 15 degrees. We have a little car and it weighs 3,000 pounds. And of course, we don't have hills around here, but if you did, you have to put on a parking brake. You don't want it to roll down the the hill. So what we want to do is we want to find the force required to prevent the car from rolling down the driveway. How do we do that? We take vectors. This weight is directed toward the center of the earth and it is a magnitude of 3000. But if I look at the triangle I could create, this is theta. Believe it or not, this triangle and the triangle draw I drew is are similar triangles, so that's 15 degrees. This is directed down the hill, it's parallel to the hill. So we want a force that's equal to that but in the opposite direction to keep it from rolling down the hill. So I'm going to label that R. And then I want the magnitude of the force exerted by the car on the driveway. What are they talking about? Well, exerted on the driveway means straight down on the driveway. So they want that part. I'm going to call it P for perpendicular. There's my magnitude, my hypotenuse. How can I find that using trig? Let's see. I have 15 degrees and I want the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's the sine of 15 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of 15 degrees would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So cross multiplying punching that into the calculator, I get about 776.5 pounds. So I would need a force of 776.5 pounds in the opposite direction pushing it up to offset that pushing down part. Here I'd have 3000 times the cosine of 15 degrees equals P or the perpendicular part. That's the part of the weight that the driveway is taking. So notice it doesn't take all 3,000 pounds because of that incline.